Welcome back to EASD TV. Now, it's a very interesting session which represents the two ends of translational work and also basic biology, and that was relating to stem cells in the pancreas. And we have with me, I have with me in the uh, studio this morning, uh, two people at either end of that spectrum. I have Raphael Scharfman from Anselm in France and Valeria Sordi from Milan in Italy. So Raphael, just tell us about the scope of this particular session and why you wanted to to uh, talk about this in the way that you did in that session. So, so, so ma making beta cells from stem cells is a dream with the idea that at one point it will be possible to replace in diabetic patients dead beta cells by new beta cells. This topic started more than 20 years ago and it started by going in the wrong direction and by adding many information from developmental biology that means how pancreatic beta cells develop during early life the, the field went in the right direction and major progress has been made. And the question now I would like to highlight in my, in my talk is, do we need more developmental biology to push this uh, field more in the right direction? Now, how about you? Because you're at the translational end. Yeah, I take advantage of what Professor Scharfman and other colleagues do in the field of developmental biology to translate it into a protocol for the production of beta cell, for beta cell replacement, from stem cells. So what we do in uh, Milan is to differentiate a particular kind of stem cells, the induced pluripotent stem cell, into the insulin-producing beta cells. And these pluripotent stem cells have really high plasticity and ability to become what we teach them to do. And we teach them how to become a beta cell following the path traced by developmental biologists. So in my work, I have to deal with the, all the possible um, obstacles that the cell encounters during the transition into beta cells. So my talk in the session focuses on the um, safety of the procedure, on the efficiency and the heterogeneity of the different uh, cell lines we deal with, and also on the possible aging of the beta cells during this forced in vitro process. So you'd say you need more translational researchers. You'd say you need more basic biologists. Yeah. I, I think we need both. <laughs> and, and we need time. Uh, what else did you discuss in this session? For example, um, I start discussing the need that we still have of beta cells because uh, with the advance of technologies, it seems that diabetes can be quite well controlled with all the new technologies. But I think that we start from the principle that both type 1 and type 2 diabetes have a beta cell failure. And if we want to cure and not only treat diabetes, we need to replace their beta cells. So a new source of beta cells is strongly needed and it cannot only come from islet from cadaverica organ donors, which is a field we know very well since like tens of years. But now it's time to find an infinite source so that we can Mm, produce beta cells, keep them ready for transplantation, schedule the transplant, so adapt also the immunosuppressive therapy to this new concept and transplant patient when needed and not many, many years and just depending on organ donation. Because this has always been a very strong field and yet hasn't quite delivered on its promise. You know, we haven't got the kind of the, the, the islet cells available for people in the way that I think we'd hoped. As, as, you know, as widely as we'd, we'd hoped. Why do you think that is? I mean, you make the point, of course, that you know, we've got other treatments have got better. So I, I, I personally totally disagree with you. Oh, good. We like disagreement. Okay. I think that in 20 years, major progress has been made from stem cells, which were undifferentiated, towards islet cells, that now are transplanted in diabetic patients. And this only in 20 years, which, which is a very short period. So I think progress have been extremely fast, really faster than what I would have been expecting uh, 20 years ago. And I think at this point, it is a major success. 
Yeah, there's a patient time scale and there's a researcher time scale, isn't there? <laughs> because we tend to always want to have things tomorrow rather than, you know, in, in understanding the time scales involved in, in research. But how far are, uh, away are we from making, um, you know, cells available much, much more widely? We are very close. The field is advancing very fast. You can think that this stem cell field just started like, uh, I don't know, IPS, induced pluripotent mm. stem cells were discovered like 15 years mm. ago and we are already here. We have already uh, like 20 clinical trials ongoing in the world with these cells. So it's very uh, advancing very fast. And there are already the first uh, clinical trials with the embryonic stem cell derived beta cells from uh, uh, several partners in the world. And so I think we are very close, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop the research in the lab. There is still room for improvement, for improving the protocol, for improving the safety of the cells, for producing better beta cells in terms of quality. And we have the luck that we have the, our benchmark, the human eyes from cadaveric organ donors. So we know exactly what a good beta cell looks like. So we have to produce stem cell derived beta cells just like that. Uh, and so I'd like to finish by asking you where you think the gaps are still. So where are the big challenges that you, for, for you and where are the unanswered questions for you? Let's um, talk to you first. So for me, the major challenge is in terms of immunology. If you take a diabetic patient and transplant him new beta cells, they will be destroyed as were the ones he had. So we need to define strategies to protect against destruction by modifying the cells, by protecting the cells in capsule or whatever. And this is one of the major challenge and we are working on this type of topic. I totally agree. Uh, now immune rejection is our main problem at the moment. We need to solve it with one of these strategies. I can add that we also need to make big work on scale up manufacturing because we are not now, we don't need to produce only cells for experiments in the lab, but we need to go into patients. So we need to produce a high amount of cells. We need to do it. Yeah, people don't, the public often don't understand that, yeah, that what the scale time, up involves. It takes a lot of money and investments and it's a very uh, long uh, way. And I also think that uh, when we are ready to infuse these cells and they, we can do it safely and we can protect them from the immune system, we also have to think of how many years they will survive because we want to produce cells that last forever or at least for a long period of time. Just, just one point. What, what people have to understand is that in our pancreas, we have around one gram of beta cells, which looks to be a small amount to regulate glycemia. But one gram means 10 to the 12, 10 to the 9 beta cells, one billion of beta cells, and producing one billion of beta cells is far from easy. What a perfect way to end this interview because you've illustrated so well the questions to be answered and the challenges still to be understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, fascinating. And of course, you can see all of that session on demand through EASD, uh, not TV, sorry, EASD in the members section. See you again soon.